Yes. Okay. The question that it seems to me we have before us is what does the system want to have happen? And there are ways to come at that. I got one approach that's similar to Jonathan. Uh, conceptually, they're kind of different. So I'll just walk through it quickly and then you all can ask questions. Sure. The tool that I use is the process Enneagram. The figure in the center is the Enneagram. It's Greek for eight term system. That's all that means. The question, the process always begins with the opening question. Like what does the system want to have happen or what do we want to do or something? It should be a future oriented type of question. When we look at that question from these nine perspectives. Who are we? What do we want to do? What are the barriers and problems? What are the relationships among us? Is there trust or not? What are the ground rules, the principles and standards that we're going to use as we have our dialogue? What is the actual physical work that we'll do? How will we create and use information? How are we going to learn and discover new potential? And how are we organized? The context is the organization of the outside world, the system in which we're embedded. The structure is our internal structure of how we want to organize ourselves. So the process Enneagram is the bridge between complexity theory and practical application. I've used it for about 35 years with groups at all educational levels from illiterate to professors. Nobody's ever walked out on me and they all come back up for two days. And the question always is, what does the system want to have happen? And we are the system, those of us here and maybe some of the others. And we are in the system. We're not talking about something over there, but rather we are in it and creating it. So it's a view from inside. It's not a view from looking at it over there. Everyone has a voice. As we do this, we need to create a psychologically safe space for dialogue. And with this group, that won't be a problem, but it's going to be where people are telling the truth. People can speak up, share what they're thinking. We're going to listen for understanding, treat each other with respect, that kind of thing. In the course of it, we co-create our living strategic plan. So we create a plan and as the world and the conditions change around us, we can continuously modify the plan to keep it current. Mintzberg was very down on strategic planning because the way we used to do it would be to work real hard for a week and come up with a plan and put it away and expect it to be the same six months from now. And it's not even the same the next day. Using this approach, we can see the whole of the question, the various parts, and how the parts interact. Doing this process is a facilitated dialogue, so I would walk you through it. I'd sort of be the facilitator for it. But it's simple and moves fairly quickly. We need to follow the process. And we need to come in with questions and not answers because new things will emerge as we talk together and engage in the dialogue. So we need to be open-minded and suspend judgment. Now, when we go into the dialogue, these are the kind of questions we ask at each point. We don't ask all of them, but these are the nature of the questions. You know, who are we? What's hindering us? What are we really trying to do? Do we trust each other? Do we share information? So these are the nature of the kinds of questions we would ask through the dialogue. And my role would be guiding us through the dialogue with these questions in mind and I'd be maybe asking you some of them. And when we get done with the process, 
we have a map which looks something like this. This is one I did a year ago for this group. And I use the color coding so the red applies to this one and to this and to this because there's so much writing on the sheet that if we don't, if it's all in black or one color, it's easy to get lost. So these are the, what the picture would look like when we get done. And then each time we meet, we bring it out and talk about how are we doing. I did a map like this for the city of Niagara Falls, New York, just before the mayor and her leadership team were inaugurated. So 17 of us spent two hours and we put together a map, something like this, which then they used to guide the city for the next four years. And there were changes. We wound up actually having created three maps during the course of the four years. And the city manager began each meeting with having each person answer the question like, how are things since last week? What do you see? Not everything, but just you know, one or two points. And the group begins to learn to talk together and listen together and work together. And in that case, we took 17 million bucks out of a $62 million budget and services improved. So it's a way for the group to engage and pay attention. So going back to the opening question, what does this system want to have happen? When we struggle with that and come up with some ideas, then we can begin to step into a process like this one or others. Okay, I'll stop. Are there questions about this? We can do this with a group this size in about an hour and a half. I, I don't fully understand how what you have now on screen relates to your original question and how it provides a kind of answer to the original question. Okay. Let's say for this diversity group, the opening question is shown here. When we yes. talk about each of the nine points, it's in with respect to the opening question. This tends yes. to keep, this keeps the conversation centered around the question rather than talking about some other subject that may come up, which would be a different process. So at each point, when I ask the questions, it's always in relationship to the opening question. And we have dialogue uh, about that. So that's how they so Richard, could I add, could I add something to that perspective? Yes. Uh, in, in the case where you have a well-defined group or a collection or city, city or some other entity uh, that is well-defined, then what may happen is happen within the way that identity is defined. I think Jason's situation, as he is our leader, uh, is how do you create the identity? Uh, or do we, uh, we, what do we want as an identity? Because certainly uh, I've listened to uh, maybe a dozen now, uh, well, half a dozen at least, uh, different present presenters. And it's not clear to me that there is a true identity uh, within this group of presenters. Uh, which is just another way of saying is, what is second order cybernetics? <laughs> well, that's, that's an excellent question. And it's one the three of us had as we talked about preparing for today. And that's a big challenge for this group. And because it, it's, it's a loose network as you know, that's different than a more compact thing like the city leadership team, for example, or this diversity group. That's the challenge we have. And so the question is, what does the system want to have happen? We're the system. And no one has an answer right now. Different uh, people I have ideas. Let me suggest. Let me suggest that some way to, if you say this is a very loose system at the moment, uh, that is the binding among the members are not very strong. In fact, they may be extremely elastic, such that they uh, are easily broken, and people leave. Uh, how do you tighten the the connections among the members or the contributors? Uh, may, may I offer uh, an alternative perspective? I'm, I'm also in another group. And so I do see an identity in this group. And that is that you're not uh, using argument as war. Actually, I, I don't know how much it has been discussed, but in other groups, 
they're very tightly uh, we're at war we're at war with society well this group is we're going to solve a problem so so the identity here is that you're all problem solvers and uh the coming and going that can be due to other commitments like i have to leave for a couple of weeks but i clearly see a commitment to problem solving and to stay away from the argument as war attitude so i would offer that as the identity that is emerging <laughs> I very find interesting place. Very interesting argument. I find here a place, Jay and, and Jamie, uh, where people are interested in striking toward the cybernetics. That, and that's rare. So well, brainstorming yeah. is already started. Uh, this, 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 this tool has the left hand side of it is really the, the cybernetic side. And the right hand side is the people side. We're bringing the people and the thinking and the ideas together. And then we're going to organize ourselves and do some work and learn. And so we're, we're bringing the cybernetics as well as the people together in a seamless way as we go through this process. And we're dealing with natural processes deeply. We've talked with Lowell about self organization. The self organizing process is in 036. It's a natural process which everybody, all nature rather, is just has lots of self-organizing properties in it, weather, for example, and rivers. The red is the line, is the pattern for how work gets done. And I think that's a universal pattern of how activity takes place when we do something. For example, I'm hungry for a piece of cake. That's my identity. My intention is I'm going to bake a carrot cake because I like carrot cake. I have to get to the recipe and see what ingredients are needed and what kind of equipment is needed. And then I look in the kitchen to see if I have all the ingredients and the equipment. And I organize the kitchen so it can do the work. I bake the cake. I eat a piece of it. If I like it, fine. If I don't, I go back and do it again and revise it. As I've watched organizations carefully for the last 30 years, this pattern seems to be recurrent. These two patterns, I have a hunch, we all know at a deep unconscious level. And when something happens, it rips off the top down processes that we're accustomed to, these tend to surface and people do them. That's a, that's a whole nother workshop we could talk about, but at any rate, <laughs> I'll stop there. I'm just, this is an offering. This is a way to look at the question. Yeah, the and interesting for thought. All of us, the question is, what does the system want to have happen? Uh, so we Richard, will keep thinking okay. about that. Uh, Richard, can I ask a question about your, your diagram? Uh, yeah, clarification the, questions. Please ask yes, it. Sure. It is a clarification question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so you, you, you picked out a path. Now, from just simple logical perspective, uh, you have nine objects there, and therefore you have, I, I think, at least nine factorial possible paths that you could select. Uh, so my question of, of these nine factorial possible paths, you picked out one, which actually uh, ignores two of the positions, uh, three and six, Oops, we lost Richard. I, I, I just went off my back now. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. I just so, fell off the network. I'm sorry. Well, that's okay. okay. That's okay. okay. I think. Yeah. Mm. The question is why do you omit three and six from your list, from your path? <laughs> because, because every model is imperfect. <laughs> <laughs> you see. <laughs> You see, ask, the, you see the thing here. Ask your question again for me, please. Oh, I, so uh, of all the possible paths, which is nine factorial, which I can't calculate in my head this quickly, uh, you, you omit, you, you pick out one of these possible paths of the certainly probably 10,000 possible paths in there. And uh, you omit three and six. And so the question is, why did you pick that path and why do you omit three and six? Particularly six is information. 
the self-organizing process is zero is who are we what are the relationships and how do we create and use information all self all groups self-organize they need to have information a motorcycle gang they have relationships that are consistent with their little mini culture and they know how they fit in and so it's a self-organizing process and as a manager and as a leader that's i worked on that a whole lot that is a different process than the process of doing, which is the red lines. Hmm. Now, I didn't invent this model. It's, I just have been able to try to make it accessible to regular people. Because you if go I back could just into- com Comment that <laughs> we what you, the question you brought up is about self-organization and that's the ontological level and the worker command and control level is at the top. What's really interesting is it's really a tripartite model of where you are in terms of command and control, rational thought, the image that you create in the learning, et cetera, that then goes down to the ontological level. And this gives you the 360 intelligence that I find fascinating in, in this effective model.